Joe Biden is unabashedly pro-abortion. This fact is clear from his long voting record, his public pronouncements, his allegiance to and support of groups like Planned Parenthood and NARAL, and from his party's platform not only in this election year, but in their platform going back decades. He and they support abortion for any reason or for no reason, right up to and even beyond the moment of birth. He and they opposed the effort in Congress to pass legislation requiring doctors who perform abortions to provide medical care to babies who survive the abortion, opting rather to let such babies, babies simply die outside the womb with no care. The Democratic Party has become the party of death, and Catholic Joe Biden is their standard bearer. Joe Biden opposes the church's teaching on the sanctity of marriage. While he was vice president, he publicly endorsed same-sex marriage in 2012, three years before the Supreme Court ruling. And in 2016, while still the vice president, he officiated over the wedding ceremony of two men, posting a photo of the ceremony on Twitter with the caption, quote, Proud to marry Brian and Joe at my house. Couldn't be happier. Two longtime White House staffers, two great guys, end quote. A Biden presidency would be a danger to our already dwindling religious liberty. He and his party advocate for the repeal of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which protects the religious conscience rights of health care workers who decline to participate in abortions and of church-based adoption agencies that choose to place children only with married heterosexual couples, among other things. Biden is also on record committing to restoring the Obamacare mandate requiring religious ministries and orders like the Little Sisters of the Poor to provide contraceptive and abortifacient drugs to their employees despite the fact that that is a direct violation of their faith conviction and of church teaching. And by the way, on the subject of religious liberty, Joe Biden is on the record as saying that as president, he would not hesitate to reinstitute a nationwide pandemic lockdown if the science demands it. Undoubtedly, such a lockdown would once again close our churches. His presidency would undoubtedly open the door for America to very quickly become a socialist country. Evidence for this assertion is in his signing on to the self-avowed socialist Bernie Sanders agenda, his selection as a running mate of Senator Kamala Harris, identified by bipartisan groups, by nonpartisan groups, as the most leftist member of the U.S. Senate. His several months long silence on the murder and mayhem being inflicted on America's cities by Marxist socialist organizations, as well as the all too obvious and serious influence being exercised within the Democrat Party by leftist extremists. Socialism is a soul robbing ideology that always and inevitably leads to totalitarianism, where the government presumes to put itself in the place of God in the lives of its subservient citizens. Mob rule is one of the chief tactics and strategies of socialism, and in a perverse twist of irony, the same Socialist mobs who like to chant, silence is violence, reaped the benefit of the several months long silence of Joe Biden and his party as the mobs carried out their orchestrated campaign of violence in America's cities. Also, isn't it interesting that the same leftist media, which gives high praise to Joe Biden's Catholicism, Mm -hmm. while characterizing the Catholicism of Judge Amy Coney Barrett as dangerous, 
and extremists. The perennial failure of many of our bishops to call out Biden and other Catholic politicians who publicly defy the church's most cherished moral teachings only serves to confuse many Catholics and many others in our society, causing them to think, oh, I guess what he holds isn't that bad. Isn't that bad? The willful destruction of 61 million babies in the womb, including, by the way, 23 million black babies, isn't that bad? I ask you, what could be worse? A nation always gets the kind of politicians it deserves. If a time ever comes when the religious Jews, Protestants, and Catholics ever have to suffer under a totalitarian state which would deny them to them the right to worship God according to the light of their conscience, it will be because for years they thought it made no difference what kind of people represented them and because they abandoned the spiritual in the realm of the temporal." End quote. And so the bottom line, brothers and sisters, is vote. And when you do, think with the church while also understanding this, that no one running for public office is ultimately the solution for what ails America. Only God is. That's not a statement of resignation to the inevitable. It is rather a statement of hope. 